Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you believe? Could you please believe, believe, believe my neighbor? Hi, neighbor. What's up, my people? This is Sean Biz the Don't. All right, man, look. Javante Tank Davis slams Ryan Garcia. Whoops. All right, man, look. Let's get to the video. You know, first, let's talk about this real quick. Oh, yeah. The fireplace is back. No, uh, I had a few of my show business partners asking me, where's the fireplace? As if I did something with it. <laughs> but I decided to do uh, a neighbor uh, episode. So let's do that. But let's talk about this coronavirus real fast. Now, the president of the United States, President Donald Trump. Now, Trump said that there shouldn't be a gathering of over 10 people in one area. With that said, everybody at work, leave. Leave your job, man. Leave your job. Leave your job. The president said, look here. If I were you, I'd be like, one, two, three, four, five, nine, ten. I'm out of here, man. I'm out. Look, if you ain't going to listen to the president, hey, come on home. Come on home. Tell your manager what. Come on home. Barbara. <laughs> no, seriously. I, I mean, I can't see how anyone's at work right now. I mean, you can't be there, right? Barbara. <clears throat> Black. Two sugars. Oh, I was out and I picked up uh, Sugar Ray Leonard's book. I'm a little late on it. Uh, it was it's, it came out a couple years ago. It's called Sugar Ray Leonard: The Big Fight, My Life in and Out of the Ring. Uh, I read the first chapter; it's pretty good. And what you get from uh, Sugar Ray Leonard is this: um, immediately. You know, when people look at Hearns and they look at Hagler and they look at Roberto Duran, they look at Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard would be seen as the guy with the silver spoon in his mouth. Well, Sugar Ray Leonard, he had the wooden, the, the wooden spoon with uh, splinters in it, just like everybody else. The guy came from very humble uh, beginnings and very poor. And uh, he had a thing for violence, which made him. A good fighter. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you can't pick up the book, I mean, this is a very good read. This is it's definitely a page turner. A lot of jaw dropping moments already. Uh, not as jaw dropping as Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, uh, his childhood was bizarre to say the least. But uh, yeah, you may you may want to check this out. It's, it's been a page turner uh, so far. OK. All right, man. Look, let's get to the video. Tank Davis says that Ryan Garcia has a better chance of beating the coronavirus. God dang! I want to say this. I want to say this. <clears throat> I like the way they're marketing the fight. Uh, they're, you know, they neither one of them are running from each other. It looks like December may just really happen. What I mean by that is Ryan Garcia's uh, father said that uh, they should have the fight between Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis. And actually, it was Team Garcia that really was was pro having the fight later this year opposed to earlier this year saying that Ryan Garcia is going to be 22 by then and he's going to grow a little bit more of his man, st man strength and he they want him to grow a little bit more of that man strength to be able to take on Tank Davis facts now this is what I want to say about Tank Davis he has a fight with Leo Santa Cruz coming up supposedly and Leo Santa Cruz that's a tough hill in my opinion for Tank Davis when you look at Tank Davis against Gamboa it took him a while to get Gamboa out of there. Gamboa, he was injured, okay? He was injured by Tank Davis, though. And I always say that's, hey, look, him and his Achilles injury, regardless of how bad it was, they said it wasn't a, ru a full rupture or anything like that. He doesn't uh, need surgery. Regardless of how bad they said it was or how bad it isn't or whatever, it was due to Tank Davis uh, laying some gloves on him, okay? If he didn't knock him down and he if he didn't fall awkwardly due to Tank Davis knocking him down, he wouldn't have had an injury. So that's, you know, a part of the fight, Tank Davis, he caused that in injury. With that said, it took Tank Davis too many rounds after that. What I mean by that is if 
he couldn't knock out Gamboa earlier when Gamboa was taking flush, so flush shots and Tank Davis was kind of running out of steam. It makes me a little bit curious about how he handles someone with a chin like Leo Santa Cruz, who's going to throw a million punches around like Leo Santa Cruz, who is used to wars like Leo Santa Cruz, who is an experienced fighter like Leo Santa Cruz. But I think Tank Davis is more than likely uh, the favorite here with Leo Santa Cruz moving up. But Tank Davis, he just moved up against Gamboa. But we all know that Tank Davis, he's a pretty, he's a, he's a pretty big guy. Now, Leo Santa Cruz, he's not running from anybody. I do think as well that Leo Santa Cruz, he's not a small guy. I think he'll make lightweight uh, pretty easily. I think he'll be comfortable. With that said, on Ryan Garcia's side, Ryan Garcia uh, calling out Tank Davis as often as he has been, I'm not sure if he's uh, thinking straight because Lenares is somebody that you just can't look past. When I think of Lenares, I'm thinking of an even steeper hill to climb for Ryan Garcia than Leo Santa Cruz may be for Javante Tank Davis. And here's what I mean. Lenares, he's one hell of a fighter. You saw what happened with him and Luke Campbell. You saw what happened with him and Lomachenko. Lenares can really, he can really fight. Good boxer, good hand speed. Leo Santa Cruz, on the other hand, he's a great fighter. Lenares, more of a boxer, right? Hard puncher, steel, fast hands, big guy. Uh, Ryan Garcia, known as a big lightweight, uh, but he's not going to be dwarfing Lenares, Lenares, he may just be naturally a bigger man, more settled into lightweight than Ryan Garcia is. Facts. So I think Lenares, with his experience, with his boxing ability, uh, with his talent, he has great physical uh, attributes as well. I think that's a steep hill for Ryan Garcia. If Ryan Garcia makes short work of Lenares, then he knows what he can do more than we do. And that's usually the case. I'm not expecting Ryan Garcia to make short sure work of Linares, but if he does, uh, oh, and if he does, I would consider Ryan Garcia the favorite over Tank Davis. But when looking at this book with Sugar Ray Leonard, okay, looking at this book, I think about the three right now. I mean, you know, Teofimo Lopez, let's excuse, uh, uh, exclude him for the moment, Lomachenko, let's exclude uh, Luke Campbell and Linares and and let's ex uh, exclude those boys, right? Uh, Richard Comey. But let's look at Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis. Guys with a little bit more to prove right now. Rising stars. Those three guys. I kind of see it as, and when I do this comparison, I don't want you to say, all right, showbiz, you lost your mind. I don't want you to do that because I'm not comparing them as far as uh, 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 how good they are or stylistically or anything like that. But when I, when I think of Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, and Tank Davis, I kind of think of Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, and Roberto Duran. And here's what I mean. Here's what I mean. With Devin Haney being Sugar Ray Leonard, I often look at Devin Haney and I say, he reminds me of Sugar Ray Leonard. His father was a huge fan of Sugar Ray Leonard. So quite naturally, when raising his son to be a fighter, I think he looks at he looked at Sugar Ray Leonard, said what he liked and what he can add to Devin Haney and what he can do. Devin Haney, uh, out of the three, he may just be the best one. And then when I look at Ryan Garcia and his height, him being 5'10", power, okay. But he keeps his head on the island, look like he can get caught. I think of Tommy Hearns, I do. Stylistically, they're not, they're, they're not a, the same. Um, as far as greatness, he only wish he can come close to what Tommy Hearns was. So I'm not comparing them there. Neither am I Devin Haney with Sugar Ray Leonard. But I'm, I'm comparing them in these aspects. As far as, um, and, and look, Ryan Garcia, he has room to grow. He may end up at middleweight somewhere. And when you think of Tommy Hearns, Tommy Hearns, he stopped, what, light heavyweight? Big kid. And when I think of Javante Tank Davis, I think of the Duran. Now, of course, Javante Tank Davis, he can't sniff Duran's jockstrap. And you would now, I don't think he'll ever be what Duran was. But I'm saying this, Duran was the smallest of the three coming up from the lower weight classes with Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy Hearns just naturally bigger than, than uh, Duran was. Duran, he made the weight though. He ended his career at middleweight. He can actually, he could put on the pounds like Tank Davis. But Tank Davis, he kind of started off in the lower weight classes where Ryan Garcia, it looks like, you know, he's sweating and making weight. 
to try to be lightweight. Devin Haney as well, already talking about going to 140. So when I look at Tank Davis, I see him as the smallest one, especially in height. So I see him as the Duran type. And if I think of them fighting each other, it may just go like that. I think Devin Haney would come out of the, when the smoke clears, he'll come out on top. I think uh, Devin Haney has proven that he can land that overhand right against Ryan Garcia and amateurs over and over and over again. And when I look at Ryan Garcia, he's not doing that much uh, extra movement with his head or anything. He got way better as a professional sitting down on his punches doing what he has to do there. Now, as far as Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis, it may go something like a Tommy Hearns versus Duran. It may. OK, I'm not saying anything against Tank Davis. I'm just talking about stylistically when you talk about that height difference and then the power. And if Tank Davis gets exhausted a bit or anything like that and he doesn't move his head soon enough, Ryan, Gar Ryan Garcia can knock out Tank Davis, I believe. Um, and I think Tank Davis and Devin Haney may just be a closer fight like Duran against Sugar Ray Leonard one. Now, of course, he know Mostum in the second one by dancing around, but I don't think, I think Devin Haney uh, would become, would come in and shape different than Roberto Duran. He only had, we already know the, the back history of that. Roberto Duran had like a, 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 a week or month or something like that to get to prepare for the fight. Think like, you know, less than a month. He was 190 pounds. He was out of shape. He came in, just drained. Uh, and Sugar Ray Leonard knew exactly what to do as far as, uh, Javante Tank Davis, he's a better athlete than Duran. He'll catch up with Devin Haney. I think Devin Haney and Tank Davis may end up, may be a closer fight than even Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis. But don't mark my words there. I'm just thinking. So when I think of the three, that's what I, I think of comparatively. Though they're not on that level. I'm going to end uh, by saying this. Bob Arrow. No, not by saying that. <laughs> I'm going to end by saying this. I think Ryan Garcia against Tank Davis won't have a fight. I think Ryan Garcia knows something, which is why he's so confident in calling out Tank Davis far more than he is calling out Devin Haney. Okay? Um, and Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia is an easier fight to make. But I think there's a reason why Ryan Garcia is calling out Tank Davis is something he sees, something he knows. Tank Davis, he's not running from anything. Uh, it seems as though Tank Davis is ready for Ryan Garcia by the end of the year. He first has to get past Leo Santa Cruz. Ryan Garcia has to get past Linares. And as far as Devin Haney, Devin Haney, he wants that WBC crown back. He liked the way it fit around his waist. But Luke Campbell is fighting Fortuna. Devin Haney has to fight the winner there. And I'm favoring Luke Campbell. Let me know how you feel in the comments below. Showbiz for adult. Black, two sugars. Mm. Fireplace. It's back. I'm out.